This is a Fox News alert. Donald Trump set to hold a rally in New Hampshire any moment now, and he is not backing off his stepped-up criticism of Hillary Clinton. Hello, everyone. I'm Shannon Bream. The Republican nominee coming off a roundtable this morning with Republican leaders in the New York area, where he called Clinton disrespectful to African Americans. And today, Trump is doubling down on his call for a special prosecutor to investigate the Clinton Foundation. This comes as Quinnipiac University releases a new national poll showing Clinton has cracked 50 percent for the first time. 51% of voters say they support her compared to Trump's 41%. We've got Fox team coverage. Catherine Herridge is standing by with new trouble dog dogging the campaign today. Leaks again. Senior national correspondent John Roberts live at the Trump rally in Manchester, New Hampshire. Good afternoon, John. Uh, Shannon, good afternoon to you. Where Donald Trump is expected to take the stage sometime in the next few minutes. He's expected to go hard again on Hillary Clinton about the Clinton Foundation. But the Trump campaign is outraged over a new web video that the Clinton campaign released this morning, which attempts to tie Donald Trump to leaders of the Ku Klux Klan and the so-called alt-right movement. In a very sharply worded statement issued just a short time ago, Pastor Mark Burns, who is a Trump supporter, says, quote, Hillary Clinton and her campaign went to a disgusting new low today as they released a video tying the Trump campaign with horrific racial images. This type of rhetoric and repulsive advertising is revolting and completely beyond the pale. I call on Hillary Clinton to disavow this video and her campaign for this sickening act that has no place in this world. The Clinton campaign clearly worried about the outreach to minority communities that the Trump campaign and Donald Trump have been engaging in over the last couple of weeks. Poll numbers in some battleground states now are beginning to turn back the other way in North Carolina. And you see in an ORC poll, Donald Trump is now just a single point behind Hillary Clinton and some evidence that in Florida, the numbers are beginning to turn around as well. Now, Donald Trump has been doing most of this outreach in his traditional rallies, but sometime in the next two or three weeks, he's going to be going into places like Cleveland, like Detroit, maybe Philadelphia and others, where he'll be actually be going into heavily black communities talking about things like charter schools and the establishment of economic opportunity zones. Trump has been criticized for his minority outreach before a mostly white audience is going to start to turn that in the other direction as well, Shannon. All right, John, there was apparently a snafu with the ballot in Minnesota. There has been some confusion. Can you tell us what's happened? Well, the Trump campaign is is playing down on the idea that there was a snafu, but it's pretty clear that uh, there were some problems in terms of the timing, because when the sample ballot uh, from Minnesota came out, uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign was on that. Uh, Clinton and uh, Kane were on it. Evan McMullen, who was an anti-Trump conservative candidate, was also on the ballot, but there was no sign of Donald Trump or Mike Pence. Uh, we started making some inquiries this morning as to what was going on with the Minnesota ballot. Within 30 minutes, suddenly Donald Trump and uh, Mike Pence were on the electronic uh, roster. Uh, not sure if our inquiries provoked that or if it was just simply a matter of timing. But, Shannon, if they hadn't been on the ballot by Monday, uh, it's likely that as of November 8th, they would not have been. Shannon? All right. Sounds like possibly crisis averted there for the Trump campaign. Thank you, John. Thanks, Jim. And new storm clouds gathering over the Clinton campaign as WikiLeaks promises to release another batch of Clinton documents before the election. And WikiLeaks editor says they could be a real game changer. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge is live in Washington with the latest. Hi, Catherine. Well, thanks, Shannon. The founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, confirming to the Kelly file last night that he has more documents and they are verifying their authenticity and then plan to release those emails before November. I don't want to give the game away, but um, it's a, a variety of different types of documents from different uh, types of institutions that are associated uh, with the uh, election campaign. Uh, some quite um, unexpected uh, angles that are, that are you know, quite interesting, some, um, some even entertaining. These WikiLeaks emails have had impact, forcing the recent resignation of the head of the DNC, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, after it was shown that the DNC did give special treatment to Hillary Clinton in order to block Bernie Sanders. And for some context, 30,490 Clinton emails were determined to be work-related and handed over to the State Department. Another 31,830 Clinton emails were determined to be private and personal records, and they were erased from Clinton servers. But that is now in doubt because the FBI recovered 14,900 emails and documents from the servers, and some of those documents may well be government business 
and even held by WikiLeaks. Meantime, a leading House Republican told Fox this morning that he has reviewed the FBI investigative file sent to Congress about the Clinton case, including the notes from Hillary Clinton's July 4th weekend interviews, and FBI agents apparently did not press Clinton on why she set up the server in the first place. And that's very curious, given FBI Director Comey specifically cited a lack of intent. He said he didn't go forward with charges because she didn't have specific criminal intent. I didn't see any questions on that. She said she did it for convenience, but, but, but I didn't see the follow-up questions in the interview I read. And for some additional context, remember during Comey's five-hour congressional testimony about the FBI, FBI email investigation, Gowdy made the point that intent can be based on circumstantial evidence, like consistently lying to the public about email practices. I'm going to ask you to put on your old hat. False exculpatory statements, they are used for what? Well, either for this, a substantive prosecution or for evidence of intent in a criminal prosecution. Exactly. Intent and consciousness of guilt, right? Is that right? Right. So that's uh, a lot to consider, the allegation from the congressman that the FBI never really pressed Clinton on the intent issue, That yet this was one of sort of the foundational reasons why the FBI director said there was really no basis to proceed with a criminal prosecution, Shannon. All right, Catherine Herridge, live for us in Washington. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and you can catch part two of Megyn Kelly's interview with Julian Assange tonight on The Kelly File, 9 p.m. Eastern. They'll discuss Hillary's pending email dump and whether or not he has any of Donald Trump's emails. Meanwhile, new Quinnipiac polling suggests both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have some work to do when it comes to honesty. But Trump may have less ground to cover. 53% of likely voters say Trump is dishonest, but that's compared to 66% who feel that way about Hillary Clinton. Chris Dyerwalt is Fox News digital politics editor and author of Fox News First. I give him a 100% rating on honesty. Is that fair? <laughs> no. Uh, okay, pass, we'll, go, we'll put you in that. the 90s. But listen, you take your good news wherever you can find it with a campaign. Uh, Trump does better than her on this issue of honesty. We've seen that consistently. Is there a way to capitalize for him? Well, maybe, but the problem is so many people who say she's dishonest are still voting for her. Mm -hmm. And the reality for Donald Trump is he has tried several lines of attack now, uh, and we have witnessed the campaign go through a shakeup, a rebranding. He's trying new stuff, uh, changing his stance on mass deportations. He's do they're doing things that obviously reflect the fact that they know that it's not working. Um, can they make it stick? The very fact that so many people that you say, 66 percent, two-thirds of people, say that Hillary Clinton is not honest, but that she's getting 51 percent of the vote, that tells you what's going on in this election right there. Okay, and part of what the pundits think and the analysts and experts think is that she's very smart in that she doesn't expose herself to a lot of uh, media, to press conferences. It's been, what, 264 days since she's actually done one. Uh, but she did call in last night to another network, another TV show. Uh, and here's how she answered that question about her kind of hiding from the media. You haven't done a press conference in more than 260 days. Well, Anderson, I'm talking to you right now, um, and I've, I've given, I think, uh, way in excess of 300 interviews this year. Uh, so I'm going to continue talking with the press and answering questions. And Why not give a press conference, though, with a lot of different venues. reporters? Well, you know, I, I mean, I've got a lot, uh, a lot that I have been sharing with the press, talking to the press, uh, as I'm doing with you right now. So Chris, you and I know that we've got we've gotten the same kind of defense from the White House and from the president, who uh, point out how many things he was doing. But then it was like People Magazine, Entertainment Tonight, the woman who's eating cereal while she's in the bathtub with it. I, you know, Glozell. what Glozell? Bless her heart. Uh, uh -huh. What about just a good old fashioned press conference? Will we get one? What? Why would she? She's getting away with it. The thing about getting away with it is you don't stop getting away with it. If you were out robbing banks and you could just walk in and fill up your trunk with money and drive out of the parking lot, nobody ever, nobody ever stopped you, you'd probably keep doing it. And for Hillary Clinton, she is, this is the Lufthansa heist of elections so far, because she's getting away with all this stuff. She's getting away with it for two reasons. Yes, Donald Trump is partly right. There is press bias here, certainly against him, and kind of in favor of the Democratic nominee. But there's the other thing. She's winning. 
She's winning by a lot. And so the pressure on her, if you want Hillary Clinton to be accountable, you want her to be in a closer race so that more pressure can be applied to her to be accountable for the things that, by the way, let's be clear, in a regular year, a normal Democratic nominee would be getting absolutely, absolutely impaled over. It would be uh, Vlad Dracul all over the place with a Democratic nominee doing this kind of stuff. But since she's 10 points ahead in this poll anyway, who cares? Nobody's paying any attention. Well, we are paying attention right now to well, Dr. Yeah, ben obviously. Carson. Well, to Dr. Ben Carson, who is about to, uh, we understand, uh, introduce Mr. Donald Trump. And the fact that may be what we're seeing. now here playing out on the screen. Um, Mr. Trump has gotten a lot of credit for sticking on message, for being disciplined. Um, can he stay there? Can he keep doing it, Chris? Well, bissing uh, far, a couple tweets here and there, but basically he is trying to be a more disciplined candidate. And I think in that way, confronting bad polls is good because when you know you're down, you become willing to change. Hmm. Okay. Now we're going to listen in for, uh, to, if there's any news being made here by Donald Trump, but I piece of paper in my hands that came from his campaign just a few minutes ago. And basically it says he is going to go hard at Hillary Clinton. He is going to respond to her, quote, outrageous claims, a speech that we are going after her. It sounds like he is going to ramp it up today, Chris. I mean, the, again, the thing is this. If you're down, what you say your attacks matter less when you're down than when it's close. So the first thing for Trump to do is he's got to shore up some unit of voters. It's great to attack Hillary Clinton. The base loves it. It's red meat. It fires them up. That's what they want. It satisfies them. And as that poll showed, the majority of Donald Trump's voters say they're voting against Hillary Clinton, not for Donald Trump. So that's an important thing for him to do to keep his base together. But he's got to grow a coalition of voters that can win the election. Once he gets it close, then he can go take the paint off Hillary Clinton. But right now, I really think his focus has to be building a new coalition, not just flaying Hillary Clinton. And, of course, there's been a lot of speculation that that's what his evolution on the issue of immigration is about. Not necessarily that he is going to go convince uh, Hispanic voters and other minority voters to suddenly run to vote for him in droves, but that he may be moderating his position in some points so that he can appeal to white voters, more moderate voters, independent voters who have been uncomfortable with some of his language up to this point. Is that part of the coalition building? Yeah, the suburbs so far have been in the polls a killing field for Donald Trump. He's doing very poorly with college-educated white voters, which are the bedrock of the Republican coalition dating back to the 50s. And he needs to fix that. And being perceived as racist and Hillary Clinton defining him as racist makes those votes ungettable. So he needs to, yes, do something to appeal to those voters. But the other thing he needs to do, and I think this is effective, Hillary Clinton calls him racist. He calls her racist. He just muddies the water. She says, you are the favorite candidate of Klansmen and white nationalists. And he says, well, you're a bigot because you treat blacks poorly. So muddy it up. All right, we're going to listen in just a little bit. Chris, thank you very much for lending us your expertise today. Let's listen in to the GOP nominee, Donald Trump, in Manchester, New Hampshire. It's going to be a victory for the great majority of Americans whose voice has not been heard for many, many years. Year after year, we live under a Washington regime, and that's what it is, it's a regime that ignores your demands, rejects your cries, and they are cries for help in many cases, and they are being rejected. And that always puts your needs first. Your needs are going to come first. The real divide in this election is not between left and right, but between everyday working people and a corrupt political establishment that works only for itself. This election is a chance for the great majority of decent citizens to end the rule of a small group of special interests and to return that power to the voters or, as we would say, to the people. Hillary Clinton believes only in government of, by, and for the powerful. I am promising government 
of, by, and for the people. In this fight, which will be a big one, we are taking on... <laughs> Let's just win on November the 8th. That would be the ultimate, and that's what we're going to do. Because in this fight, we're taking on some very entrenched and well-financed interests. Money is pouring in to her campaign by the special interests, the lobbyists, the donors, the people that own the companies that are moving your jobs to Mexico and other places. These are the same people who pay Hillary $10,000 a minute for a speech. Not a good deal. Not a good investment. These special interests are the same people who own the newspapers that cover up her crimes. They're covered up. These are the same Wall Street firms who paid Hillary Clinton a quarter of a million dollars each time she delivered her secret remarks that nobody knows what she said. They're the same people who paid Bill and Hillary Clinton over $150 million for speeches since Bill left the office. And who donated countless millions of dollars more to the Clinton Foundation. But you have the power with your vote. And by the way, New Hampshire is a very, very important state in this election. Very important. And if I win, New Hampshire, okay, when I win, okay. Okay. When I win, just remember this, this is a promise, New Hampshire is staying right where it is in terms of primary. It's an unbelievable state and an unbelievable tradition. And there's a lot of talk of moving you to the back of the pack. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I give you my word, New Hampshire stays right where it is. Okay. So you have the power, with your vote, to defeat those special interests and put the people back in charge once more like it's supposed to be. This has been a very historic week in American politics. The voters have always known that our leadership in Washington, D.C. is corrupt and that the system is very badly rigged, a word that I believe I used first that has been copied all over the place. It's badly rigged and it's broken. But this week, the curtain was truly lifted. The corruption was revealed for all to see. The veil was pulled back on a vast criminal enterprise run out of the State Department by Hillary Clinton. As the Associated Press documented, more than half of the meetings Hillary Clinton took as Secretary of State with people outside government were Clinton Foundation donors. Hillary's Chief of Staff, received more messages from the Clinton Foundation's chief operating officer than just about anybody else. 85 donors alone that she met with as secretary gave the foundation $156 million. And I know many of these people, I know many of these people, these are not people that are going up to pay their respects and say, Madam Secretary, how are you feeling? Isn't it a beautiful day? The weather is so beautiful. 
These are people that want things for their donation. These are people that expect things for their donation. And when you follow it out and you see the people that left their office, you take a look at what those people, those companies, and those countries got. Believe me, you will find out it is plenty. On top of that, Bill Clinton's total speaking fees rose 44 percent while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, often raking in money from people who had business or matters before the State Department. Very simple. As I said weeks ago, Hillary Clinton ran the State Department like a personal hedge fund. It's hard to tell where the Clinton Foundation ends and where the State Department begins. <laughs> Access and favors were sold for cash. It's called pay for play. Over and over and over, people who donated to the Clinton Foundation or who gave money to Bill Clinton got favorable treatment from Hillary Clinton's State Department. The examples are too many to name here in full. And I've gone over, I will tell you, I've looked at so many over recent days. But they include the deal to sell 20% of United States uranium to Russia. Or the very favorable treatment given to UBS, big bank, giant bank. It includes, we're all sick of it. It includes the exemption of telecom giant Ericsson from government sanctions. It includes efforts to put a foundation donor with no national security experience at all onto a highly sensitive national security panel that he wanted to be on with access to top secret information. It includes foundation donors getting lucrative contracts in Haiti, all while the people of Haiti suffered horribly and are not, by the way, big fans of the Clintons. But these examples are only the tip of the Clinton corruption iceberg. Hillary Clinton's actions constitute all of the elements of a major criminal enterprise. You know it, the government knows it, and she knows it. She created a private... <laughs> She created a private illegal email server in order to hide her corrupt dealings. That's all it is, folks. Very simple. She knew what she was doing 100%. She did so knowing full well it would put American lives at risk by making classified information highly vulnerable to foreign hacking. And that's what happened. And by the way, people that did 2% of what she did, their lives have been destroyed. But she didn't care. As long as it helped her get away with her crime, no risk to America was too great. It didn't matter to her. And now she's running for president. Then, to further cover up her crime, she deleted... 33,000 emails to keep them out of the hands of the authorities and the American public. As a further element of the criminal cover-up, she claimed under penalty of perjury that she turned over all of her work-related emails. We now this to be one more massive Clinton lie and deception. 
The FBI found thousands of work-related emails she failed to turn over, including the new discovery this week of 15,000 more work-related emails she did not disclose. What is being uncovered now is one of the most shocking scandals in American political history. It's Watergate all over again. It's Watergate. And she's being totally protected by our government. A Secretary of State sold her office to corporations and foreign governments, betraying the public trust, putting innocent lives in danger, and then she went to great lengths to hide, delete, destroy, and lie about the evidence. Just like her lie that she never sent any material marked classified. Total lie. Lie after lie after lie. This is the corruption we expect to see in a third world country, but not in the United States of America. Just imagine the damage to our security, to our integrity, to our standing in the world. And believe me, the world is laughing as they watch. If Hillary Clinton is allowed to sell the Oval Office in the same way she sold her office as Secretary of State, and she can't help herself. She cannot help herself. We cannot let this happen. Can't let it happen. We must vote on November 8th to keep the American government from being sold to the highest bidder. Vote to save your country. So important. So important. You folks have no idea how important you are in this room and in this state. So important. And by the way, folks, if you're looking at the poll numbers, take a look. We're doing very well. Very well. So vote to protect your family. Vote for honesty, integrity, and accountability. Now, as all of these revelations have been discovered, some this week, many this month, Hillary Clinton has been hiding. She's been hiding. Where is she? Although I hear for the first time in a long time, she'll be making some kind of a quick statement tonight. But she's emerging not to take the responsibility for her unethical and criminal conduct, but instead to make one of the most brazen attempts at distraction in the history of politics. Now, I've not seen what Hillary is going to say, but I've heard about it. And in a sense, I don't want to dignify her statements by dwelling on them too much, but a response is required for the sake of all decent voters that she is trying to smear. The news reports are that Hillary Clinton is going to try and accuse this campaign and all of you and the millions of decent Americans at record levels. There has never been anything like this. This is a movement we have. This was set up. This event was set up late last night, and look what happens. Look how many people. It's a movement, folks, like they've never seen before. And going to accuse decent Americans 
who support this campaign, your campaign, of being racists, which we're not. It's the oldest play in the Democratic playbook. When Democratic policies fail, they are left with only this one tired argument. You're racist, you're racist, you're racist. They keep saying it, you're racist. It's a tired, disgusting argument. And it's so totally predictable. They're failing so badly. It's the last refuge of the discredited Democrat politician. They keep going back to the same well. But you know what? The people are becoming very smart. They've heard it too many times before. The well is dry. The well is dry. This is the year the American people who believe in much better and much more honest politics say the word enough, enough. This is the year that the people who have been betrayed by democratic policies, including millions and millions of African American and Hispanic American citizens, reject the Hispanic who have failed them over and over and over again for 50 years, for 75 years, without break for even, in some cases, a hundred straight years. They failed them, and you're gonna vote for a change. It's time. As I've discussed for many days now, Democratic politicians have run nearly every inner city in America for the 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. Their policies have produced only more poverty, total joblessness, and failing schools. Every policy Hillary Clinton supports is a policy that has failed and betrayed communities of color in this country. But she doesn't care. She's too busy raking in cash from people and rigging the system and taking the African-American vote and the Hispanic vote and saying, we're going to do a great job. And right after the election, it's bye-bye. I'll see you in four years. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> Nearly four in ten. African-American children live in poverty. 58% of African-American youth are not working. More than 2,700 people have been shot in Chicago this year alone. These are the consequences of Hillary Clinton's policies and the policies of people that think like her. She has brought nothing but pain and heartache and broken promises to your inner cities. On top of that, she wants to raise taxes on African-American owned businesses to as much as nearly 50% more than they're paying now. I am lowering taxes very, very substantially. She is asking for a major tax increase. We should be helping these businesses grow and expand, create jobs. But Hillary Clinton is virtually trying to shut them down. She opposes school choice. You need your education is a disaster. She supports open borders that violate the civil rights of African-Americans by giving their jobs 
to people here unlawfully. She supports trade policies that have closed factories in African-American communities and put millions of African-Americans and others, all of us, out of work. So many people out of work. She supports radical regulations that puts Americans out of a job and that raise the price of their energy bills, you all see it, beyond anything that you thought would ever, ever happen. She supports policies on crime that make communities less safe and that make it harder to raise your children in security and in peace. You see it all the time, the inner cities. Parents walk in with their beautiful child and they get shot. They're shot. Their child is shot, often killed. Folks, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Donald Trump will fix it. We're going to make it better. We're going to help education. We're going to straighten out crime. We're going to create jobs. We're going to bring our companies back. What the hell do you have to lose? It can't get any worse than what it is right now. You know, I said this a few weeks ago, and I mean it so deeply in my heart. We will fix it. We will get it fixed. They're never going to do it for you. It's words. It's politicians. You know what I always say about politicians? All talk, no action. They're controlled by their lobbyists and their special interests and their donors. Me, I put up my money. I'm into this thing for a lot of money. I want to tell you, nobody's going to be calling me and asking for favors. We want to move a company to Mexico. Please make sure it happens. Let me tell you, I'm going to make sure just the opposite. I'm going to make sure it doesn't happen. I believe every single parent in this country, and especially in the inner cities, has the right to raise their children in safety. Walk down the street in safety, not be shot at. This is one of the great civil rights issues of our time, and people don't talk about it that way. This is a civil rights issue. The Democrats have run your inner cities. They're making a fortune for themselves, and they're destroying, they're destroying, remember this, the people that live there. They are destroying those people. This is actually a civil rights issue. And it's a disgrace, and they should be ashamed of themselves. But Hillary Clinton doesn't want to talk about any of this. She can't defend her record. She's got a horrible record. And as Bernie Sanders said, she's got very, very bad judgment. She really does. All you have to do is look at what she's done. She doesn't have one single proposal that hasn't been tried and failed. She doesn't have one idea that does anything but destroy jobs for African Americans and Hispanic Americans and all Americans in our country. It's going to be a disaster. Her trade deals were a disaster. This will be catastrophic for our country. So what does she do when she can't defend her record? That's right, she lies, he said it. She lies. And she smears, and she paints decent Americans, you, as racists. She bullies voters who only want a better future and tries to intimidate them out of voting for a change. I'm for change. She doesn't want change. As I discussed yesterday, These are the same tactics the establishment powers used to try to scare the British people out of voting for change also. It didn't work there, and it's not going to work here.
Call me Mr. Brexit. The American people are ready to vote for freedom, opportunity, and justice. They are ready to take back control of their own futures. You have to take it back. We will take it back. The movement will take it back together. It's time the Clintons were held accountable for their inappropriate conduct. Thank you. You can see the feeling in this country. You can see by this, by these outbursts, you can see the anger, the anger at what she got away with, but maybe she won't get away with it. But you can see the anger when law enforcement allows her a free pass on something that was so bad. You can see the anger in this room. You can see the anger all over the country. Great, great institutions, the FBI, the Department of Justice. They've taken a hit in our country and throughout the world like nobody ever thought would be possible. Nobody. According to the book Game Change, Bill Clinton shockingly said about President Barack Obama that a few years ago, this guy would have been getting us coffee. That's what he said. And we've all seen the cringeworthy comments from Hillary Clinton, which I won't get into here, but we know what they are. You've heard them. Here's the central point that I want to get across today. Hillary Clinton isn't just attacking me. She's attacking all of the decent people of all backgrounds, doesn't matter, of all backgrounds who support this incredible once-in-a-lifetime movement. Never seen anything like it. We can't let that stand. We can't. Voters are used to the old game where failed politicians like Hillary, who did lose to Barack Obama rather decisively, an election she was supposed to win easily. Uh, please don't forget that. Where she falsely smears Republicans with the charges of racism and other things. Republicans then always have a tendency to back down and be defensive and look bad, not Donald Trump. <laughs> Democrats then continue to push policies that are devastating to communities of color and devastating to lots of other communities. We must break this corrupt cycle. We're going to. And we are going to break it beginning today in New Hampshire. So let me make some very clear statements before this whole country, including all of those many cameras back there. First, on the border, the people of this country who want their laws enforced and respected, respected by all, and who want their borders secured are not racists. If you want to have strong borders so that people come into our country, but they come in legally through a legal process. That doesn't make you a racist. It makes you smart. It makes you an American. They're all patriotic Americans.
We will build the wall 100% and Mexico will be paying for the wall. We will build it 100%. I see all this stuff given out over the last three or four days by the media that Trump doesn't want to build the wall. Folks, we are building the wall, okay? And remember this also, I have great respect for Mexico's leaders because, frankly, they're smarter, tougher, and more cunning than ours. But remember this also, Mexico is making an absolute fortune dealing with the United States, not only on the border, but with trade. $60 billion trade deficit we have with Mexico. Remember what I say, Mexico will pay for the wall. Remember. These are patriotic Americans of all backgrounds who want their jobs protected and their country kept safe. It's very simple. They want to have their country kept safe. I will never apologize for pledging to enforce and uphold every single law of the United States. We will uphold those laws for our people. I will never apologize for making it, it my, and this is, I will tell you, for making it my priority, but is it your priority also? I think so. So I will never apologize for making it my priority on immigration to protect American citizens above every other single consideration. We have to protect our people. We've lost sight of that. We will end illegal immigration and we will restore the constitutional rule of law. It will be restored. Next, on national security, people who speak out against radical Islam and who warn about refugees are not Islamophobes. They're not. They are decent American citizens who want to uphold our value as a tolerant society and who want to keep the terrorists the hell out of our country. If the choice is between saving lives or appeasing politically correct censors in Washington, D.C., that is the easiest choice you and I will ever have to make. We will always choose saving American lives. We have thousands and thousands of people being brought into our country from the Middle East, from Syria. We don't know where they are, where they're coming from. They don't have paperwork. There's no reliable source that can vet these people. It could be the all-time great Trojan horse. Thousands. And Hillary Clinton wants to increase that number by 550% a year. Not gonna happen, folks, not gonna happen. Not on my watch, that I can tell you. Now on crime. People who support the police and who want crime reduced and stopped are not prejudiced. They're concerned and loving citizens and parents whose heart breaks every time an innocent child is lost to totally preventable violence. There is no compassion in tolerating crime and poisonous drug dealing 
and the killings all over our streets in so many different cities. I will work to dismantle the criminal gangs and cartels and to liberate our poorest citizens from crime and violence and poverty and fear. To Hillary Clinton and her donors and advisors, pushing her to spread smears and her lies about decent people, I have three words. I want you to remember these three words. Shame on you. When you're like the Clintons getting 60, think of this one, getting $69 million in political contributions from Wall Street and big banks. And I think I got 16,000, you saw that. And I don't know who the poor guy is that gave me the money, because he's not gonna get anything for it. It's easy to look down on the so-called little people. This is the way she views the people of our country. It's easy to ignore the devastation caused by our open borders when you spend all of your time with wealthy donors and Hollywood celebrities who... It's easy to ignore the heartfelt concerns of communities about radical Islam entering our country when you spend your time hanging out with foreign dictators in their lavish palaces and homes. And it's easy, no doubt, for Hillary Clinton to turn a blind eye to the ravages of crime when she has her own personal armed security force. Now, she wants to essentially dismantle our Second Amendment. I think the first thing she should do is call up Washington and immediately request that her great Secret Service agents drop all weapons, let them walk around with no weapons. And let's see how she feels about that when she wants to take away your guns. But this is how the system is rigged. For decades, the American people have demanded that their immigration laws be enforced and that their jobs be protected from out-of-control immigration. But the special interests who only want cheap labor have stopped it from happening. They've totally stopped it. And they're putting up tremendous amounts of money. For years, the American people have worried about letting radical Islam spread within our shores. But the elites, who only want to raise more money for global corporations, ignore the concerns of the American voters. Very simple. For 50 years, people living in our inner cities have suffered under the Democrats' failed policy regime. In almost every case, it's democratic rule. But the democratic politicians who only want to please media executives and Wall Street donors do nothing but expand the hurt and the suffering that our inner cities and our country is going through right now. It's time for a new day and a new dawn in America. On November 8th, we will end the rule of special interests and we will begin the rule of the people. I am asking for your vote so that we can break free from the failures of the past and create a new American future. for your vote so that we can achieve amazing things for the American people. 
We can be greater than ever before, I am telling you. We can be greater than ever before. And African-American citizens and Latino citizens will have the time of their life because we are going to create jobs like you've never seen. We're going to bring our companies back. We're going to bring our jobs back. And we are not going to allow these companies to leave our country, fire all of their workers, make their product, and sell it foolishly back into our country with no retribution, believe me, those days are gone. So I'm asking for the vote of every African American and Hispanic American who wants to see for the first time, maybe ever, a better future, and a future that begins with jobs, 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 and also education, education, education. We are going to bring back great education for our inner cities and for our country. We will fix our disastrous trade deals and stand up to the countries that cheat, of which there are many. We will lower taxes and create millions of new jobs as a result. Companies will come pouring in. We will unleash an American energy revolution. We will eliminate job-killing regulations destroying our businesses. We will repeal and replace the horrible disaster known as Obamacare. We will enforce our immigration laws and we will put rules in place that hire American workers first. And that includes Hispanic workers, and that includes African-American workers. We will end the era of nation building and instead work in partnership with our allies to crush and destroy ISIS. We will keep radical Islamic terrorism out of our country. In live, listening in we live there to Donald Trump United speaking in Man America. Manchester, New Hampshire, to a very spirited uh, audience. Let's bring in Congressman Ron DeSantis, member of the House Oversight and Reform Committee, Republican out of Florida. Uh, Congressman, great to have you with us today. I want to ask you on, about something that Mr. Trump's hit very hard on today, this issue of Hillary Clinton's emails. I know you're on the Oversight Committee. There is a hearing coming up in September, and it involves the FBI and potential perjury charges. What do you intend to pursue? Well, as you know, Shannon, we in the Congress have made a referral, criminal referral to the FBI about her testimony under oath in front of Congress. Director Comey somewhat incredibly said they didn't even consider that when they did the initial email and national security investigation. He said, we usually don't do that unless you guys refer it. So we did refer, and there are four uh, specific statements mm -hmm. that not only do we believe are false, but that Comey's investigation have shown to be false. And so he needs to take that and make a recommendation to the Justice Department. All right, and we just have a few seconds left, but I want to ask you about uh, Mr. Trump's very marked uh, expression of how he feels about the minority community, uh, you know, referring to Hillary Clinton as a bigot, making an outreach to them. He's polling terribly with that group. Do you think he can turn that around, that segment? Well, I think he's got to. I think our message has to be one of limited government principles that apply regardless of your ethnic background. I mean, we're all Americans, and I think you've got to get into that sweet spot. And if you're somebody that's viewed as racially divisive, I, th I definitely think that's a net negative. So I'm hoping that he can show that he's got something to offer for all Americans regardless of their background. All right, Congressman Ron DeSantis, thank you so much for joining us. We will watch for that hearing coming up in September. We appreciate your time. time today. Yep. And as you can see there, Mr. Trump wrapping up after a very fiery speech. He said today he would go hard after Hillary Clinton, and he did on fronts. It seemed to be 
We'll have more analysis of that and much more of your news of the day. I'm Shannon Bream, and now here is Shep.